love you. Sorry, you're not feeling well. Wife's not here for recording. You know what that means. I didn't actually have an idea for this bit, so I'm gonna have to fix it in post. He's a freaky young girl, a bisexual, but a hustler though. I spend more time than I'd like talking about Sam Regal. And to be clear, that is not because I don't like talking about Sam. I mean, out of all the live play actors that I watch, he's easily the one I relate to the most. But no, it's because I feel that many players do just as much as Sam, and I feel like the fact that I keep returning to his moments as he's the focus, well, it feels like favoritism, right? But as I finally began to really dive into Campaign 3, I ran into a certain moment that finally made it all click. Why Sam always seems to be the focus of things that catches my attention and why he seems so enrapturing. And shockingly enough, it wasn't something just because of Sam. It was honestly a lot more. So let's talk about what happens when a good bot's armor cracks. You keep trying to say, it's okay, it's yeah. all right, you abandoned, that's not all right. No, it's not. It's, it's not. okay to be it's mad not. and maybe that's what they need is to be yelled at and that's that's how you can get past it. I don't know, I'm giving advice. I shouldn't be giving advice. Oh no, no. I, I mean, I advice. feel like part of the, what your advice is you're saying to her might be applicable to me. I gotta talk to her. I gotta figure out what you're saying. You're creator's not dead. My mom's alive. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah, maybe that's you should right. be mad at her. mom's alive. Holy shit. We should just hurt them all. No. Let's talk about Sam, Fresh Cut Grass, and the very fun story that's unfolding. Whenever I talk about these live play moments, I tend to give context leading up into it. But to be honest, this one is really difficult to do that because there is a lot of context. So I'm going to be giving a lot of benefit of the doubt to the viewers and assuming that you know what happened up until this point. And for those of you who like to watch my videos and not watch Critical Role, I will do my best to give enough context without, well, you know, bearing down on it all. But before I do that, um, you know, Spoiler warning, because this is the first video I've really done on campaign three, and it's, you know, I'm jumping in kind of further into the campaign. I'm not doing something near the beginning. So there's a lot to, to get. So, you know, spoiler warning, squirrels, the, the whole thing won't pretend that Jay went crazy here. Because <laughs> the whole bit about me going crazy was apparently getting on some people's nerves and they started commenting a lot about it. <laughs> To which those people, I say, get. I'm gonna keep committing to the bit because I think it's funny and I'm allowed to enjoy. Anyways, the moment we're talking about today revolves around Sam's character, Fresh Cut Grass. Fresh Cut Grass is an automaton. He is a creature, sort of, a bot, definitely, and a fascinating character. See, he seems to be a therapy bot, as Sam seems to play him. A robot built for the intention of therapy, of emotional catharsis, of being there for other people. And what's the designation bit? Oh, well, that's just my purpose. Oh, your special purpose? Yeah, just to... To, to help, you know, you, you living folk make sure that you're okay. And honestly, it's a really fun character to see. Yes, it is Sam playing yet another one of his typical small comic relief-like characters, but people are allowed to have brands of characters. I can't count the amount of times that I've tried to play an edgy character, and I always end up playing a character who thinks they're edgy, but really just has a heart of gold and is kind of a himbo. I mean, at this point, that is my brand. People are allowed to play specific types of characters, and so Sam commits to his. Now, Fresh Cut Grass is a very interesting character because, well, the entire concept of a sentient robot made for therapy brings up a lot of questions, like how does he know how to help? Who taught him? Where did he come from? And those are answers that, well, the campaign doesn't really have. Well, I, she said that, you know, there there might be more of, of you, so. of, of your type coming in to, to, to shop, more associates. Yeah, she was, in, she, she, she made me and, and, and gave me, you know, my intent. I mean, even Sam is a little confused on Fresh Cut Grass's backstory. See, supposedly he was made by an individual named Dancer and was created as a group of different robots. They were all named after dancers, you know, favorite smells. So you got things like fresh cut grass and uh, there was apple pie, there was pussy. Um, there was a bunch of a bunch of us. Wow. Yeah, Sam definitely has such a flair for interesting backstories. Now, obviously, if it was just a robot built for therapy, that'd be one thing. But of course, Sam can't just make a character like that. There always has to be some secret tragic background. And Lord knows, 
We have that here. You know what you did. What? It was a static. static. Static? Oh, in me? Flashes in your mind. Oh, shit. But that's not just him. As is typical of Critical Role, each of the characters has their own secrets and backstories, but honestly, I feel like this campaign makes it the most organic out of all of them. Campaign 2 sort of gained its popularity off of the interesting theories that people made about people's backstories. And so, therefore, there was an influence to maybe make more characters with secret backstories. But that's not exactly what they did. Each of them feels very organic. Like, there's a reason they wouldn't just talk about this. Not because they're just keeping secrets for secret safe, but, you know, it's personal. And we don't typically like to indulge personal secrets to people we've just met. So, everybody has secrets. Laudna has trust issues with her patron. Imogen has fears of something greater influencing her. Ashton has worries of what comes next in their party. And Orem has struggles with trusting the group in general. You know, he's playing a serious character like Liam always does. Everybody here is a potential fucking powder keg. Except for this one, for some reason we've decided to have one person who seems healthy and well adjusted. Honestly, it's a little irritating. Yeah, but cool. you always need one. I believe you're a powder keg, don't you worry. Fern has parental issues and Chetney, well, Chetney has issues in general. Look, there are two small comedic characters in this campaign and definitely leads to some certain scenarios. Fucking savage. He really was I was inside of you. I haven't seen since that first day we met. And you tried to pretend to be intimidating, and I was like, "Yeah, this fucking bot can roll." And then it was real, and I saw it for real that time. And honey, I'm in. I'm sorry, Chet. I, I didn't. I mean, you're so old. I shouldn't have attacked you. But honestly, because of all these backstories, each of the characters' personal objectives end up clashing with each other. Their goals constantly cause them to butt heads. And the reason I wanted to talk about the moment we are today is because it's not really about Sam. It's not really about fresh cut grass. Instead, it's a situation where each of the objectives of the characters clash all together to create a beautiful concoction of drama, story, Intrigue? I think it's amazing. See, leading up until this moment, there's been a few different things going on in the background. One, Fern, Ashley Johnson's character, has been searching for her parents for a long time. And when she finally finds them, there's some discrepancies. Apparently her parents only thought that they were gone for a few years. Meanwhile, Fern has been looking for them for, well, decades at this point. And it turns out that maybe her parents are not as noble as they might seem. Yes, they told her that they were leaving to go save the world, but now she finds out they're working with one of the enemies of the party, the Nightmare King, a strange fey creature with very dubious goals. Using the same power. I, best I know, I'm making back Ira's up. building it? Oh, Ira and Ollie are. He's picked up a lot from Ira and they've been kind of How does, how can you trust that he's not just doing something awful with it too. Alongside that, they just got betrayed by one of the guest characters in the party. And yeah, like I'm not gonna give a whole ton of context by that, but they had somebody come join the party, played by Erika Ishii, and that character ended up being somebody who was manipulating them for the sake of hunting down Fern's parents. So already some huge trust issues going on. Meanwhile, well, you have all the rest of the characters who have been dealing with some shit. Ladna is a warlock with a patron who's familiar for those of you who have seen campaign one of Critical Role. Excuse me, did we win a prize? Yes, little one. You've been chosen for a very special event. <laughs> and this patron has constantly been whispering into her ear, trying to seed moments of doubt. You continue to wander around things that hold all manner of delightful and dangerous magics. You know the impact they can have on you. You know the impact that magic has had on you. I claim responsibility myself. So just consider this recompense. Trying to keep you safe. For if you die, I go to. Imogen has been having these strange prophetic dreams and is worried that maybe she's doomed for something nefarious. And then she keeps meeting people from those dreams, wondering what's happening. Also, there was a struggle between Laudna and Imogen recently where Laudna accidentally destroyed a magical artifact that was very important to Imogen. So even more trust issues. You feel the warmth, the heat begin to travel through your arm. Tell me what it is. Shh. Tell me what it is. I've taken care of it for you. I drop it? You can't. What are you doing? I can't. What are you doing? It's her. 
The heat passes through your shoulder and into your chest. She won't let me let go. And that cold bass sound becomes a warm heartbeat as the warmth hits your chest. And at that moment, your fingers pull open and the gem is cold and broken. I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. What just happened? You lied. No. And, you know, you have this for basically every character, Ashton and Chetney included, but Fresh Cut Grass is going through it the most. See, he found out that who he thought was dead, his creator, Dancer, is actually alive. And when he tries to contact them, they seem almost scared of him. See, up until this point, he's been glitching out when attempting to remember things. When asked to remember what Dancer looked like, he began describing other people. When asked to try and describe things about his past, he seems to almost make things up or glitch. What did Dancer look like? Um... Well, she was furry and tall. She was furry. A little, little fur. Like, like a, fur? Uh, not, I mean, no, not the same. It's just sort of like a, a light, a light, a light fur, I guess. All right. Um, I had a little floppy ears and, um. Was she very tall? She was pretty tall. All right. I mean, taller than me. Um. And uh, she was riding a horse at one point. Yeah, she and she had a moon tattoo. A moon tattoo. No. Like oral? No, no, that's oral. Yeah, no. She, she, she was tall, and she had like a light, a light sheen of fur. It's a fascinating way of playing this character, somebody who clearly has trauma, but it's played off as if it is a robot glitching, which I, I, I really like that. It's very fun, but it leads to something incredible. See, they finally meet the Nightmare King, temporarily work with him, basically get betrayed with him, he disappears and teleports out. At this point, Fern then has to have a huge confrontation with her parents where she admits she's angry, and she's never really been angry before, but she's upset at them for what they've done, and it leads to a confrontation helped by fresh cut grass. Kind of got the impression, Fern, that you would very much like answers. Um. Yes. Yeah, and you're allowed to be angry. Is there therapy going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see us just staring at you? It just felt like there was some, like, really good advice Wait, are over you in here. here? No. no you, this is your job, obviously. No, no, I'm not no. trying to give therapy. I, I just, just, just want to listen. I just want to uh, yeah, just 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 be here and just experience this. Just keep going. No, I'm not I, here. I'm, I'm just, just talking to her no, in her brain. Just, yeah, just obviously. do that. I'm just going to watch. Keep going. <laughs> well, I don't really, uh, I don't really have much more to. But this keeps escalating and escalating and escalating because Fresh Cut Grass has been at the center of many of these issues. Like I said, he's a therapy bot. He wants to help. And so he injects himself, sometimes unwanted, into the different issues that each of the different party members are going through. And so as they all have these issues, more stress builds on Fresh Cut Grass. He needs to be relied on. He needs to help them. And the more that he doesn't help them, the more that they don't want to burden him, the more he begins to feel useless and worthless, like a piece of garbage, an object, which he is an object, isn't he? He's an automaton. And it just keeps building and building and building until the point where we reach a snap. See, they need to contact Dancer. They need to find out about this machine that they found that the Nightmare King was working on. So he messages her once again, and it doesn't go well. Dancer? It's me, Fresh Cut Grass, again. Um, I might... I might need you soon, and I'm worried about you. Where are you? Can you tell me? Please, leave me alone. I barely got away. I hope I never see you again. You know what you did. This moment leads to a break. Fresh Cut Grass needs to feel wanted. And many of us can relate to that idea. If we are not helping people, if we are not providing value to them, what are we worth? And so as he's been trying to do this for each and every party member and failing to do so, he reaches out to the person who originally created him who now wants nothing to do with him. And it just snaps. It breaks down. And something else within Sam, something else within Fresh Cut Grass comes out. You'll see Fresh Cut Grass just sort of go silent for a second and go limp a little bit and just sort of hang hang their head down a bit and kind of 
kind of sort of fade. I'm going to detect thoughts. There is this burgeoning wave of tumultuous emotion and intensity, a level of stress and anger and just a bottled cacophony of so many different voices and thoughts that they've taken on through years. It's at a brimming point, at a breaking point. I saw Joe do this once, and I'll just walk over and I'll pull out the wooden mallet. <gasps> oh, boom! <laughs> I guess I'll move. Okay. I guess I'll just buzzsaw him. <laughs> I'll use my movement to just get right up on him, and I'll just start saying, why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut your fucking mouth? This leads to an incredibly intense confrontation that while it does not last very long, it creates this amazing catalyst that causes everybody's issues to come to light. As Fresh Cut Graph begins to attack and verbally assault in the most vicious ways, tearing down the very things that he's asked them to confide within him, each of the other party members begins to feel their own worries beginning to develop and grow and emerge out. Just gonna scramble some stuff around, put you to sleep, because you're being a little weird. Parents don't like you. Oh, they wow. never did, and that's why they got rid of you. <laughs> I and you know what? They were fucking right! Oh, wow! I'll, I, I guess looking at her, I'll just say, you were never alive. Obviously, Orem feels like this is, well, everything that he's been waiting to happen at this point. None of these people trust each other. None of these people are willing to work with each other. And now one of them is attacking. It was bound to happen. Ashton is sitting here wondering what's going on. And he has been trying up until this point to fit in, to make this work, to feel like he's doing something good. And now he's watching somebody break. Chetney has just been a problem up until this point, And he's finally suffering the consequences of it. Imogen has felt like there is something looming on the horizon. And now he has to deal with this. But the one person who's dealing with it the most is Fern and Ladna. Fern was just betrayed by her parents and now she's being betrayed by this. And so that in itself is hard, but Ladna, Ladna dealt with something else. That patron I mentioned has been goading her, attacking her, convincing her of something terrible that her party mates cannot be trusted. And then fresh cut grass does this and it causes a boiling point. Suddenly she just starts hearing this like, this rushing in her ears and it's like she can hear the words that Delilah just said about how her friends are going to betray her and how I'm in a dangerous place and how I need to protect myself and my friends are gonna betray me, my friends are gonna betray me, my friends are gonna betray me. And I walk up to him and I, I wrap my hands around his head and I say, don't you fucking do this, wake up! As you, as you grasp the face, you hear that voice curl up from in the back of your mind once more and be like, you see, at the end of all things, only yourself can be. Hi, Todd. And that glowing red light you see in the face of fresh cut grass briefly turns a black, void-like umbra. Just under my breath, you hear, this isn't who you are. Uncertain who she's talking to. Ladna attacks, driving her fingers into Fresh Cut Grass's head and just beginning to disintegrate him, to cause the metal to chip and erode and tear and rust until Fresh Cut Grass drops unconscious. The fight does not last long, but it shows so much. And truthfully, this is what showed me why I like talking about Sam so much, because Sam has a gift, and it's not just being a good roleplayer, though he is, it's finding some way of making that roleplay just draw everybody else in. He's like a lightning rod, a catalyst, a draw for everybody else to be able to bring out their own roleplay and emotions. And this is a great example of this. This moment was not just about fresh cut grass, it was about laying out on the table everybody's problem. He didn't make this just about him, he had specifically targeted each of the other characters and written down the things that they struggled with. Can I look for any of those, um, any of those memories that were flashing all at once, any of those voices that I heard that were different? And their memories of Orem and you confiding in FCG and in battle, taking the impact of someone else's trauma and hearing the words of discomfort and, and sadness of other people around. Uh, when they're all strung out, it's just a bunch of experiences. It's just the world around. And in that moment, it was just all of it folded into a single point in time to an overwhelming degree. I can tell you some of the things you hear. You hear Chetney saying, 
I love working with wood. I didn't feel I needed anyone. And you hear, uh, you hear yourself say, I have this thing with crowds. And then you hear Fern say, I have so many regrets. And you hear Orm say, most nights I miss him. The time we had was real good. He had focused on it. The reason that Sam seems to be at the center of the greatest moments is not because it's just Sam, but it's because it's the whole group and he's so good at helping them have a platform, which is, I mean, just what role play is about. Regardless of if it is about performance, it is also just great role play. Sam gives platform and spotlight to everybody else when he does these things. Whether it is his famous what's my mother's name moment back in campaign one, whether it is in campaign two where he revealed Knott's backstory, or in this moment where he does this. Every time he makes sure that the moments where he does this helps everybody else bring out the emotion and the drama. It gives them the rise and the ability to escalate things and then de-escalate. And I think it's very admirable. It's easy to feel like we are the main character when we do these things, like we're trying to bring ourselves into the spotlight and take away attention from others, but this is how you don't do that. You give everybody else the chance to participate, to be involved. An intense moment is just opportunity for more people to be joined in. And I think it really nailed to me why I love watching this group, why this group is special, because they are all so good at giving each other these moments. And I think it's very admirable. Sam's a great player, yes, but it's not that special. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's extremely talented, but with a different group, it would not shine as well as it does here. It's so important to have, well, a collective understanding with your group, a desire to tell a great story, a nice ability to gel everything together. Because what Sam did was he made a character based off a very real emotion, the desire to be desired to be useful, an insistence that you must have some amount of value to everybody around you. And Lord knows that I can relate with that. This idea that if you cannot provide value, if you cannot be helpful to others, they will at a moment's notice drop you. That if you are not there for them, that if you are not insisting on being this perfect individual, what use do you have at all? That's a real emotion. And he created it and used it to help everybody at the table, to give everybody a platform, which in some ways is ironic, but man, it's hard not to admire, right? And I think that is a great lesson to be learned from all this, that when you have these great moments, when you have these large clashes, bring everybody else into it, because Lord knows that it's worth it.